Guys, here we have the world famous Little Moose. And she just wants you to know that to view this video properly, especially when it comes to the eclipse portion, she recommends you view this in a darkened room at the very least, and if you can, in a completely dark room so that you can get uh, the proper viewing of the, uh, like I said, the nuances of the, of the video. If, if the room is too bright, you may miss certain things. So, Moose is being shy today, and she also wants to make sure that you enjoy this video. Here are the settings that I used in the making of this Total Solar Eclipse video. Uh, you can pause this to see what they were. Here is information on the telescope that I used. Here is information on the uh, telescope mount that I used. Here we see a list of the uh, eight total solar eclipses that I've been blessed to see so far. And so you can pause this video to get the information on each one in chronological order. So I wanna take a few minutes before we see the video to describe certain things that uh, the viewer may or may not be aware of. First off, no video or pictures can truly uh, convey what you see when you're there in the moment. And anybody that has seen, whether it's one or 30, can tell you that uh, videos and pictures are just a representation. But um, to be in the moment and within the shadow of the moon is something that is beyond description. Um, of the eight eclipses, this is the very first time I've done any video through any type of telephoto lens or as in this case, a telescope. The totality portion of the video will be 9 minutes and 19 seconds. At the location that I was at, as many people know throughout the uh, country, uh, I had high, thin clouds, and they were moving, and so that did tend to soften the image. The first 3 minutes and 48 seconds, we see that uh, the... Uh, photosphere, the visible image of the sun, is a thin crescent, and I wanted to show the uh, progress of going from a thin crescent to almost non-existent. So then I flipped the solar filter off the front of the lens of the telescope, revealing the prominences around the edge of the sun. And uh, those that saw the eclipse probably know that the one at the very bottom at around 6 o'clock was easily visible to the naked eye. Another thing that I want you to take note of is as you watch the progress of the moon going across the surface of the sun, you'll, you'll see that on the leading edge, it starts to cover up the prominences, and then on the trailing edge, it starts to reveal other prominences that weren't seen. So I wanted to bring that out. It's very cool to see. Something else you'll see in this video is I did vary the exposures. So in other words, uh, to, to, to get deeper into the uh, uh, inner corona and stuff, and the prominences, and then also to reveal the outer portions of the corona, I had to do that. And so, if you're wondering why, that's that's what I that's what I did. Now, at approximately seven minutes and forty seconds into the totality, we get the diamond ring, and you can see when I flip the filter back onto the telescope, 
you can see the Bailey's beads, uh, which is the photosphere of the sun passing through valleys on the moon's edge. This was something first noted by Francis Bailey on May 15, 1836, in an annular eclipse. And then the eclipse continues to a widening crescent and the ending of a most beautiful event. So, to follow is that video of totality. Hope you all enjoyed.